Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here and today we're going to show you how to program a Honeywell Wireless 5816 door or window sensor. The sensor can be used to protect really any opening whether it's a door, window, cabinet, gate, garage, uh, well garage door there's probably better options but pretty much anything that opens and this will fit and uh, work on you can use it. Um, on the device, it's very uh, distinct characteristic is these five ridges. So if you're ever unsure, actually four ridges, if you're ever unsure of which sensor you have, if, you, if it looks bigger and boxier like this with the four ridges, most likely it's a 5816 sensor. It's by far the most popular sensor uh, that you'll find with a Honeywell wireless system because most kits sold include three of these. Um, we prefer the flatter 5811 sensors which uh, have roughly a quarter inch depth, whereas this one's more like an inch and a quarter. Um, so this one doesn't blend in quite as nice, and that's why we include our 5811 sensors with our kits. Um, but if you have a system from somebody else, most likely you got this 5816 sensor. And um, it is bigger and boxier for a reason, so I'm gonna show you that first. At the base of this arrow is a little tab. You can use your finger to just push that in and this snaps open. And on the 5816 circuit board, we have a few things here. This wire coming around the top is the antenna. So that's how it gets range, good range, back to our Lyric system or our Honeywell wireless system. It's got a little tamper switch, so if the cover pops off, you know about it. And it's got this little terminal block, two terminal screws, and that's why there's really this depth of the sensor. And that can be used to wire to an existing wired device. So instead of using this sensor with the magnet to simulate the door opening and closing or to protect the door opening and closing, you actually could wire this and just have this sitting on the wall as a wireless transmitter wired down to a wired contact and the wired contact would be the one that's actually detecting the intrusion. All right. So it's a unique sensor in that sense that it can be used as a wireless door and window sensor or it can be just used as a wireless transmitter to get a wired sensor activation back to a Honeywell wireless system. All right. To program the sensor, we're going to need to have the battery installed. So the battery will normally come shipped outside of the unit and um, on the little battery holster there's a negative and a positive side. So you just look at your battery. It's a Panasonic Lithium CR 123A. It's a 3 volt lithium battery and you just make sure you put positive to the positive side and negative to the negative and then you close it up. There's a little uh, two plastic hinges kind of that slide to the bottom and it snaps shut into place. On the side of the sensor you have your serial number sticker and that serial number is used when enrolling the device to the panel. On the other side, there's two hash marks in the plastic. And those hash marks are indicating where your magnet needs to be installed. So it doesn't really matter if the arrow's up or the arrow's down. It just matters that the magnet follows the side with the hash marks. If you put the magnet on the other side, the sensor won't work. If you put the magnet on the top, it won't work. On the bottom, it won't work. But either way you install it, as long as the magnet is in line with these two hash marks, the sensor should work. So, now that we know how the sensor works and how, and how to get power to it, we're going to program it to our Lyric. So, to do any zone programming from the home screen, we hit Security, Tools, and type our installer code. By default, it's 4112. We haven't changed it, so that gets us in. If we're seeing this screen at that point, username, password, alarm reporting number, and supervision timer, or supervision time. That just means that we have not yet associated our system with monitoring service. So it's just a local system. In that case, we don't need to associate it with alarm net. That would be going through a provider for monitoring service. And then they're associating your panel with an account on their server. So we don't have to worry about that for now. We're just going to hit no. If you are associated for monitoring, all of those screens would have been skipped. As soon as you go into programming, you would have this screen here. And if we hit program followed by zones, we're ready to program our sensor. As we've described in our other uh, zone programming videos about the Lyric, the first two zones on the Lyric system are hardwired zones. So they're reserved in case you wanted to wire 
a sensor directly from a wired contact into the panel without going through a wireless device like the 5816. So unless you're doing wired zones, just go ahead and skip zones one and two and start with zone number three. Zones number three, four, five, and six are in there as template zones. It just means they have some template words, front door, back door, window, motion sensor built, built in um, to the default configuration of the panel. But that doesn't mean we can't change those settings. So you don't have to skip down and start on seven new. You can actually start on three and hit edit. And the first thing you'll notice is this zone has not been programmed. We know that because the serial number is blank. So the first thing we have to do is associate the serial number of the device with the Lyric system. There's two ways to do this and it tells you right at the top what the two options are. One is to simply enter the serial number which would, which would take 0291072. The serial number is always seven digits. It's always numerical digits, not alpha digits. Although there is an A alpha number or A alpha digit on the serial number sticker, but you don't have to type that A. You're just typing the seven digit number. And if you were to hit done, you would be programmed. What I like to do instead is to activate the sensor because what that does is confirm the battery's good, the sensor's good, and that they're talking to each other, all with an auto enrollment process. If you typed in the serial number, then you're not sure did I mess up on the typing because it's not going to give you an error. It doesn't know what serial number it should be. And then when you go to test the sensor, if you're frustrated because it's not working, it might take you a little while to realize you put in one digit wrong. If you do the auto-enroll mode, you really can't mess it up because it's auto-enrolling the serial number for you. So to do that, you have to have power in the, in the device and you have to put the magnet to the side with the hash marks. And now we're going to simulate three door open and close activations. So we do it once. You move it away and put it back and you heard it beep. We do that one more time after pausing a couple seconds. Move it away, put it back and it beeped and it beeped twice and it put the serial number with the proper loop number. And if we do that one more third time, it actually locks in the parameters that it just auto detected. So I always recommend doing the auto enroll mode when programming your wireless sensors to your Lyric system because again it verifies everything is good before you go and start to install it and then go further down the road and get frustrated that things don't seem to be working right. So that's just a, an easier way to program it and also verify everything is good. You'll notice this is loop number two and you may be wondering why it went to two and not to one. When we showed you internally in this sensor that they had those two screw terminals that can be wired to a sensor, an external wired contact, if you were using it in that manner where you don't care about the magnet, you just have this as a transmitter on the wall wired to another contact, then you set it with loop number one and you're telling the device to not look for the magnet and just alert on remote activations of the wired sensor. When you use loop number two, then you're telling the device, I don't have anything wired here. Just use the magnet and the sensor like a contact normally would be just with this one device. And if you were doing both, let's say you had two windows side by side, you can do a zone with the magnet and the transmitter. You could wire up and around the frame and come in with a, a wired door contact on the other window. And then you could actually program two different zones for this one device. The zone that's used with the magnet would be the loop number two looking for this activation and the separate zone on loop number one with the same serial number would be looking for the wired contact activation. So it's a unique sensor, offers some flexibility um, which can help your installation and help cut costs. If you don't want to use as many wireless sensors in the house, you can wire contacts into this device. For our case, we want to use it just as the wireless sensor, so we're going to leave it loop number two. And we're going to put this on our living room sliding door. So instead of the default front door, we're going to choose where it says front and clear out that template word. If we hit L, it'll jump to the first available L word in the custom library that the, link, that the Lyric offers. So to put in these descriptors, we're not just typing the word we want. We can't just choose, you know, Sally's bedroom have to choose it from a custom library. Um, when it's used with the, with the custom word, then the panel will be able to speak the word 
when it chimes or when it goes into alarm. If you did put a word custom like Sally's bedroom, it'll say the bedroom part, it just won't say the Sally's part because it doesn't know that word. So if you want to use a custom word to get the best voice enunciation from the system, Library. you just do your best to describe the sensor for where it will be. And if you notice, I did L, it jumped to the first L word. I hit I, it jumped to the first LI word. And I hit V, and it jumped to the first LIV word. Room. One more down arrow gives us the dual word of living room, but it's learned in as the first zone descriptor one. Okay? And we want to put a clarifying word on there, slider or sliding. So we do an S and an L. And it jumps to the first SL word, which happens to be sliding. And now when the central station gets an alarm, they can tell the police it's the living room sliding door. When the police get there on site, they're going to walk around the premises and they're going to know to look for the sliding door as the point of entry. Just gives them better information about how someone got into the house. So you want to be as descriptive as you can using both the zone descriptor 1 and 2. And also keep in mind that the device type of door will be spoken as well. So you don't have to put living room door to have it say living room door. In fact, if you put a door here where it says sliding, it would say living room door door. You'd actually be getting the double activation of the word door. So just remember, zone descriptor one and two are spoken along with the device type. Next selection is response type. Um, response type, if you're used to traditional Honeywell Vista security systems, would be the zone type. And that's just how does this zone react and interact with the system. For most door and window sensors, you're going to do either entry exit 1 or perimeter. When you select it to be perimeter, the alarm is activated immediately when this sensor is violated or, or activated. All right. So when it's a door or a window that you do not use when the system is armed, you want it to be perimeter because you don't want a criminal to have time to enter the property before the alarm goes off. However, if that living room sliding door is a door that we use to let the dog out, or it's a door that we use when we come home because it's accessible, we park in the driveway and we come through the living room door, then we would need to select entry exit one. And with a zone set to entry exit one, you'll have a 30, well, by default, you'll have a 30 second delay when you open the door and it's armed to come in and disarm the system. And you'll have a 60 second delay when you arm it to leave to go and open and close this door on your way out. As long as the door is closed by the exit delay period countdown, then you're not going to have a false alarm. So if this was a door we didn't use when the system is armed, if we select perimeter, now the alarm is going off right away. So in our purposes, we don't use the living room when it's armed. We don't have pets. We're not going to open the door. We're going to remember that even in the stay mode, if this door is violated, the alarm is going to go off. And therefore, we're in a more secure setup because any intrusions or any door opening should be a real alarm event in that case. And we want that siren to kick off right away. So we're going to leave it perimeter. Alarm report is a toggle feature, yes or no. Do we want alarm activations from this sensor to go through to our central station if we're monitored? Most of the time, that's a yes. You certainly can select it to be no if you have a reason not to send that alarm to your central station. Chime is an option where when the system is disarmed and the zone is violated, the door is open, you can have the panel actually beep beep along with a voice enunciation of living room sliding door. And then that way you would know, oh, the kids opened the door to go to the pool. I better go check on them. Or, oh, someone just came in my front door. I better go see who it is. So a chime is just a way to hear in the house what's going on. So we like to leave that set to standard or select the right type of chime noise you want. So if you have a preference for how it will sound, you can select that. And then finally, supervision. Any device that's in the house that's in a fixed position um, should be supervised, especially if it's a uh, security sensor. What supervision does is it will tell you, the panel will go into trouble mode if it sees a low battery or if it sees range issues. This device, when set to supervise, will check in every 70 to 90 minutes. If 12 hours go by and the, device, and the panel hasn't seen any check-in messages, any alarms or any troubles from this sensor, then 
it'll store up a supervision trouble for that zone and you would know that hey I better rethink my my location or hey I better make sure I have my serial number program maybe I was off a digit so the panel's not seeing anything from this device so the supervision is always recommended for your security sensors and that's why that way you'll know about low battery issues in advance and you'll know about range or wireless transmission communication issues in advance once we have everything programmed the way we want this zone to act we hit save and when we come out to the home screen we have our chime and we have our voice set and enabled right now so if we simulate the door opening again you have to put the contact in a way that the magnet will be on the right side the side with the two little hash marks our door is closed in this position once we open the door the magnet pulls away and you heard it beep and do the chime the nice fancy chime that we selected when we were in there and it said living room sliding door so you know exactly what happened you can see at the top it says not ready to arm if you hit security it'll toggle and show you that you have that open living room zone and if you hit the zones you see it's a fault there as well as soon as we shut the door you can see the door closes the system goes back to ready to arm and you can arm the system because all your doors and windows are closed up so that is a properly enrolled 5816 wireless door and window sensor into our Honeywell Lyric system which is backwards compatible to the 5800 series sensors we hope you've enjoyed this video on how to program your 5816 sensor to your Honeywell Lyric system if you have any questions when doing your setup or your programming of your 5816, please email support at alarmgrid.com and make sure to subscribe to our channel as we'll be releasing many more videos about this great new Honeywell Lyric system.